My name is Lee Tracy. I'm a retired engineer, electronics engineer, for the British Military Intelligence Service, known as MI6. On this particular day, I keeled over, and to my utter surprise, I couldn't get up. And so I crawled along the corridor to the bedroom and managed to get hold of the door and tried to pull myself up. I managed to get about halfway, lost my grip, fell over, banged my head onto the wardrobe, fell against the bed, crashed that, and the owner of the bungalow, a cat, I'm its servant, panicked, jumped off the uh, bed pillow where it's sleeping, across the little bedside table, and knocked this telephone off. As you can see, it's not very stable anyway. That allowed me to get 999, and an ambulance came and uh, got me back on my feet, and I promptly fell down again. So they said, oh, well, we better take this fella to the hospital, which they did, because I started out life as an RAF intelligence officer. And uh, I was also a life member of the RAF Association. And so when they kicked me out of the hospital, the RAF sent me away to what they called a rest home uh, outside Blackpool. And at that rest home, there was absolutely nothing to do. Uh, and so, to amuse myself, I interrogated all of them. And I came uh, to the knowledge that none of them knew what to do if they had fallen down and couldn't get up. And the NHS said, oh, you've got to go to classes to learn how to fall down properly. So I went to these classes, so I interrogated them as well. And I've discovered that only about 20% of them uh, had devices such as this, or even wanted devices such as this. And of those 20%, 60% never used them, never knew how to use them. So I thought to myself, there's got to be something better than this. My idea was, and uh, simple, how can we get the person that has fallen down, how can we get that knowledge outside their bungalow to people who can help them? And first of all, we've got to detect that they have fallen, but they could also be unconscious. So you have two needs, two requirements here. If they are conscious, then my device in the room plugs into a 13 amp socket, one in each room. And it uses PIR to detect that you've entered the room. And it then monitors what you do in that room. Now, if you stop moving, a loudspeaker in here will address you and call you by your name and ask you, are you all right? Are you okay? And if you answer, yes, 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 I just sat down to have a rest or something like that, it does nothing. If you hit your head or you're unconscious, you don't answer. So it then checks a wristwatch you have, which is more to, uh, than the wrist. To you, it's just a wristwatch, but it's actually a heart monitor as well. And this unit then checks with that. And if it decides that there's something is not right, it sends a signal within the bungalow or the house to a control unit, which is a control unit like this here. And that control unit will then flash a help sign through your window, and it will also sound a siren. And uh, it will then make six telephone calls to get help for you. You can have the microphone that can listen and the speaker that can listen, but incorporating it all into a system which will actually get you help 
doesn't exist. Does anybody else think this is any good? One of the opinions I got was from the chief engineer, or retired chief engineer of Siemens Electronics. And he thought it was the best game changer he'd ever come across. And I also met many uh, elderly people who said, oh, if you can put that on the market, we'll buy it, we'll have that. So the market, according to the people I spoke to, which included the National Health Service, was that the requirement in the UK alone was 2.47 million.